السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم إنا نسألك العون والعفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة يا أرحم الراحمين uh, today we are inshallah going to talk about Surah al uh, Surah uh, and uh, Surah Al-Buruj, inshallah. And depending on how long we have, inshallah, we will be talking about Surah Al-Tariq. So let's start with Surah al Inshiqaq. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, so far, all the surahs that we have discussed in, uh, and talked about in Surah uh, um, in Juz 30 talk about the uh, strengthening the Iman and the faith of the believers, of the new believers. And we, uh, we've seen so many images of the day after. We've seen so many uh, uh, ayahs that show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sworn about some important issues. Today, inshallah, we will continue talking about the day after and we'll see what will happen in uh, the, the, this surah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ida sama'un shaqqat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إذا السماء انشقت وأذنت لربها وحقت So what will happen when the heaven is split asunder and listens the, the heaven by doing this is listening and is obeying its Lord So this refers to the day of judgment the stars scatter the sun loses its light, so everything in the sky will not be the same. Everything is off track. And this happens because of Allah's command to the, to the he, uh, heaven to do so. So the heaven listens and obeys to Allah's command to split apart. Wahuqat means and it must do so. It must obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, it obeyed Allah's order because this order is great and it cannot be rejected. The order of Allah overpowers everything and uh, everything is submissive to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what happens to the skies, to the heaven. <coughs> now, what will happen to the earth? وَإِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ وَأَلْقَتْ مَا فِيهَا وَتَخَلَّتْ وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ Again, when the earth is stretched for and has thrown out all that was buried in it. Again, the earth to listen and obey it to Allah's order. So what will happen to the earth? It will expand. It will spread out. Why? Because it, it will hold all the creatures that will come, all the creations that will be recreated, the, resurrected from uh, 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 everyone is coming out again. So everyone is standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stretched forth and expanded the earth. And the, this earth has thrown out all that was buried inside. We saw in Surah Al-Zalzal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَسْقَالَ أَثْقَالَهَا When the earth be the shake, the earth will, will send out all the people that were buried inside. 
and she is doing that, the earth is doing that, it is doing that because it's obeying its Lord's command and it must obey Allah's orders. يا أيها الإنسان إنك كادح إلى ربك كدحا فملاقيه أو من you are doing whatever you are doing in this life you are every day every day uh, you start a fresh day but this day ends and every day that ends is getting you closer to your death and when you die this means that you are meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So what, what are you going to, to bring with you before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Your deeds. So you will get your deeds whether good or bad, whether good or evil. And you will be rewarded for that. But then he whose record is given in his right hand, he shall have an easy reckoning without difficulties he will not be asked and investigated for all the minute details of his deeds and we know Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said man al -hisab, man al -hisab whoever is interrogated during reckoning then he will be punished and that's why we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of, uh, of the dua, Allahumma adkhilna al-jannata binuni sabiqati hisab. Allah is, Allah is the most generous. He can do whatever he wants. Always have husnu dhan billah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have the good opinion in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever you think of him will happen. وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا so that person who is uh, who who got his record in his right hand, so for you has a hisab and yasira will have an easy reckoning. وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ يَسْرُورًا and shall return to his folks in paradise. Of course, they are there, rejoicing, delighted. He will be happy by what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given him. He will be happy that he 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 was saved from hellfire. وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا That's the highest of rejoicing. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ But whoever is given his record behind his back, so his left hand is being bent behind, behind his back and he will be holding his record with his left hand behind his back. So what will happen to him? He shall call for death. He would wish that he never got his record. He knew now that it will be eternal torment. And he, and he shall enter a blazing fire. He will taste all types of torment. Fire, hamim, ghassaq, zaqoom, aghlal. So fire, uh, uh, the uh, boiling drinks, pus, uh, the coughs, everything. He will wish, he will call for death, which will never happen. إِنَّهُ كَانَ فِي أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا So what's the reason for, for his being in, in Jahannam now, for his being in hellfire? Verily, he was completely in joy among his folks. He never feared the future. He never feared the day after. He never thought of resurrection. His, his light happiness, which he lived in dunya, will be followed by long grief. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يُؤْتَى بِأَتْعَسِ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا فَيُغْمَسُ غَمْسَةً فِي الْجَنَّةِ The worst person uh, or the, the, a person who lived his worst life, 
poverty, illness, uh, bad luck, everything. And he was always thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was always obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That person will be brought in uh, uh, the day after and he will Im be immersed in just one for one second in Al Jannah and then he will be taken out and he will be asked, have you ever seen any bad luck? Have you ever seen any bad moment? Have you ever lived anything not happy with you? He would say, no, by Allah, I never, I never saw anything bad. He will be asked, are you rotted? Are you happy with your state? status you say alhamdulillah i'm happy with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with whatever he predestined for me and i uh, i witness ya allah that uh, uh, i'm satisfied but i want you to be satisfied with me then another person who would be from the best people's life uh, one person who is living all the luxurious life he will be but he is he is a bad person he will be brought uh, uh, and he will be immersed in one uh, for one second in hellfire and he will be taken out and he will be asked he will be asked, have you ever seen any good fortune, any, any happiness, any luxurious life? And he will say, no, Ya Allah, nothing. Uh, and, and by this, we, meet, we know that all the, the non-halal luxury will be uh, uh, taken away and only the sin will be following that person until it will lead him to hellfire. Why was he doing so? He thought, verily, he thought that he would never return. So no resurrection, no resurrection after death. And he was mistaken, of course. Why? But because Allah says, Bala in Basira. Yes, verily, his Lord was ever watching him. His Lord has, has been ever beholding him. He will, he will get him back and give him the punishment he deserves. Allah is all knowing. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on and, and, and does the swear. So what? فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالشَّفَقُ But no. I swear with redness of the horizon. You see this this time before the sunset or after the sunset, this redness in the sky, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, swearing by. So the redness that appears from setting, the setting of the sun until it's completely dark. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing here by this time. وَاللَّيْلِ وَمَا وَسَقًا He is swearing by the night and what it gathers together, what, what it has together. Everybody goes back at night to his home. So, stars will be there, animals, people. Uh, at night, everything goes back home and everything will be together. So, Allah is swearing by this time also. وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَسَقْ and he, Allah is swearing also by the moon when it becomes full, when it completes its cycle. So the light will have full light. And this is the most beneficial and the most beautiful time of the moon. So what, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swearing about? لَتَرْكَبُنَّ طَبَقًا عَنْ طبق. You will surely pass from one state to another. From one stage to another. You will be an infant, then a child. This is one stage. From child to adult, another stage. From adult to old age. Old age to death. Death to barzakh. Barzakh to resurrection. Resurrection uh, to reckoning. Reckoning to reward or punishment. So 
there will be state after state. You will pass by a state of ease, then it will be followed by difficulty or difficulty followed by ease. Wealth after poverty, health after sickness. You are always in changing of states. Who created all of this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَا لَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ What's the matter with them? What's the matter with these people? They don't want to believe. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقُرْآنُ لَا يَسْجُدُونَ And when the Qur'an is being recited before them, they would not prostrate. So now uh, there is a hukum, jurspun, this hukum, fuqh, that when you pass by an ayah that has a sajda, prostration, you have to make it. If you are in a class, you delay it until the end of the class, or uh, if you are teaching, you delay it until the end of the class, until you finish your teaching. But remember to do sujood at tilawa. Uh, it's one sajda, you just, you, you need to have wudu for that. You say Allahu Akbar, and you do uh, sujood, Allahu Akbar, subhana rabbi al-ala, subhana rabbi al-ala, subhana rabbi al-ala. There are so many duas in that, uh, and uh, uh, especially for the tila, uh, sujood at tilawa. Now, so, why are they فَمَا لَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ وَإِذَا قُرِئَ عَلَيْهُمُ الْقُرْآنُ لَا, يك... لا يَسْجُدُونَ بَلِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُكَذِّبُونَ But the non-believers deny. They deny resurrection. They, they oppose the truth. وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يُعُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best why they are collecting, what they are collecting in their records. Allah knows what's inside the hearts. Allah knows everything they do, whether they do it in secret or in public. So what will happen to those non-believers? فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Therefore, you give them the good news of painful torment. The word Bashirhum is normally in Arabic used to give good news. So this is a, a style of being satiric. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, saying, then give them, inform them, announce to them that they will be in painful torment. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except for those who believe. الصالحات, and do righteous good deeds. And remember always in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about الَّذِينَ amanu, He follows it by وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Because faith alone is not enough. Doing good deeds alone is not enough. You have to have both of them. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لهم أجر غير منون. So only those who believe and do righteous good things, only those shall have a reward that never comes to an end. Those who followed the orders and fulfilled their duties will be highly rewarded with a reward that will never decrease. And it will never end. And this, this uh, reward will be without measure. It will be a gift without an end. And we have talk, uh, seen how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the numerous bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would prepare for the people of, uh, the people of heaven in the day after. So this is what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, revealed in uh, Surah Al-Inshiqah. Now, inshallah, we will be moving to Surah Al-Buruj. In Surah Al-Buruj, we have a story of a young, uh, a young boy, uh, a story of a sorcerer, 
sorcerer and a story of a king. So what happened? It's one story. So what happened? Uh, uh, there was a king who, uh, who had a sorcerer and this um, magician became old. So he asked the king for to give him a boy so to teach him magic. So one boy was assigned for this job. So what happened? Um, the boy would come every day for uh, to learn uh, magic and he would go back home. Every day the same thing. On the way, one of the days, he met a monk and the boy stopped and listened to him. He admired his speech. So the boy would be late for his, uh, um, for the uh, magic, magic class and he will, he will be listening and uh, enjoying the monk speech. Every day he would stop for him, uh, he'll stop there and he will listen, he will learn from the monk and then he will go to his class. Now, what happened, the, uh, when, when he, he is late for uh, the sorcerer, the sorcerer will hit him. And when he would go back home late, his family would hit him. So he told that to the monk and he said, if the uh, um, sorcerer would uh, uh, want to hurt you, you will say, my family delayed me. And you do the same for your family, you will say, the sorcerer delayed me. And time passed by. One day, there was a huge, terrible creature uh, at the end of the road. So people were unable to pass and they were so frightened. At this moment, the boy said, he took a, um, a stone, a big stone, and he said, I want to know now which one is better, the monk or the sorcerer. And he said, Ya Allah, if the monk is more beloved to you and you you are pleased with him and you want me to learn from him and be uh, with him just kill the sorcerer and he, uh, just kill the uh, animal so he hit that uh, uh, beast and he killed it so now everyone knows that there is something special about this boy uh, he went back to the monk and he told him what happened. So the monk told him, look, boy, you are going to be someone special in the future. Uh, just uh, uh, remember that you will be tested. Do not tell about me. So that boy was uh, able to... Uh, uh, heal people, uh, he was able uh, to, uh, everyone who is sick at his, uh, uh, with his uh, people, he would, co uh, would come to him and would ask him to heal him. There was one condition for the boy, I will not uh, heal you unless you believe in what I believe in and you follow my religion. That person would say yes and all his people, all his tribe became on his religion. Now once there was a courtier of the king who was blind and when he heard about the boy he uh, he went to him and he took gifts and, and he asked him to uh, uh, to cure him and the boy said I don't cure anybody it's the power of Allah that cures everybody it's the will of Allah so you have to be uh, on my religion and I will make dua for you. And that uh, person 
uh, became on his religion. Uh, the boy made dua and he, uh, he was cured. He got his sight again. So when he visited the king the next day, the king looked at him and he said, what happened to you? How did you, how were you cured? He said, uh, I was cured by Allah. And he said, by me? Because the king used to claim that he is Allah, that he is the Lord. There is no Lord other than him. And he said, no, my Lord and your Lord is Allah. The king was so mad. And uh, he asked him to go back to uh, 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 um, to the re old religion, and he refused. So uh, he uh, he got him uh, uh, tortured so badly until he told about the boy. So they got the boy. Now they know that the boy used to treat people from suffering, from blindness, from uh, leprosy, from other diseases. And uh, the king uh, uh, asked the boy to go back to the religion and he said no. So he was tortured so badly until he talked and he said, mentioned the monk. They got the monk and they, uh, they tortured him to, to go back. And uh, he said, no, I'm not going back to the uh, bad, to the, uh, to this religion which you are following there is uh, there is no religion you are following uh, a human being and you are considering him uh, a lord i'm not following him so he was he he was tortured uh, they got a saw and that saw was put in the middle of his head and he uh, uh, was sewn into two parts the same thing happened to the uh, to the uh, culture of the uh, king. When they wanted to kill the boy, the king the king asked them, uh, "Go take him to the mountain, and I want a very severe punishment. You throw him from the mountain, and he will die." So they went to the mountain. the The boy had uh, a very uh, he had faith in his heart. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him because he is on the right path. So he said, oh Allah, save me from them. So when uh, they reached the top of the mountain, uh, uh, the mountain shook and all of the king's men died and he returned back. So when the king uh, heard what happened, he, he said, just bring him back and uh, get him on a boat to the middle of the sea and throw him there. When they, when they did that, he also said, Ya Allah, Allahumma kfini him bima shi't. That was his dua. Allahumma kfini him bima shi't. So, uh, which means, Ya Allah, save me from them. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got the, bow, the so high, uh, high uh, waves, uh, the uh, boat flipped, they died, he went back to the king. Uh, was getting crazy and he said all the point is that the king wanted to kill him so he won't affect all the people and made them follow his religion so the he told the king look you want to kill me but you will not be able until you do exactly the same as i will tell you now he said uh, what is it how can i kill you and uh, he said okay you uh, uh tie me up to a tree you gather people all the people you take a, sh a bow from my quiver and you say bismi rabbil ghulam in the name of allah by the name of allah the lord of the boy so and you throw me the king did that everyone was watching so the boy died the reaction of the people was what the uh, king was afraid of. Everybody believed in uh, the religion and in the God of the boy. And they said, we believe in the Lord of the boy. So the king ordered uh, a, a ditches to be, dug, uh, to be dug and fire was kindled in them, a huge fire. And they would take every person and they would ask him, go back to your religion. Who, uh, and whoever abandons this new religion, 
uh, let go, if they insist to be on that religion, then you throw them in that fire. And this is called Ashabul Ukhdud. Al Ukhdud is the ditch. Ashabul Ukhdud are the people who were thrown in this ditch. One uh, person, she was a lady, uh, uh, a mother, she was carrying her infant in her hands and she was hesitant when they asked her. She was afraid, she was scared for her boy. And these are, this is one of the boys who spoke while they were infants. We know Sayyid Naisa spoke and this boy spoke when they, he was an infant. And she was hesitant. Should she, should she save her boy? Should she save herself? The baby said, be patient, mom. You are following the truth. And she, uh, of course, she, uh, by, after these words, she did not uh, uh, go back uh, uh, to the previous religion to follow the king, to worship the king. So uh, she was thrown in the fire. So let's now uh, quickly uh, understand the ayahs. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sama'i dhati al-buruj. There is, as uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, giving an oath here for something. So he is uh, swearing by the heaven, holding the positions of the sun, the moon, the stars, and the plants, each in its orbit. That al-buruj, orbits, and everything that's in the sun. Wal al maw'ud. Uh, Al-Yawm al-Maw'ud is uh, uh, referred to the, uh, refers to the Day of Judgment. So Allah is swearing by Al-Yawm al-Maw'ud, by the Day of Judgment. وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained this ayah in particular and he said, Shahid, uh, uh, so it means by the witness. Okay, this is the witness, Shahid. So what is the shahid? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says this, this refers to Friday, to the day Friday. And the, uh, he says, the sun does not rise or sets on a day better than Friday. Now, يوم الجمعة شاهد هو يوم الجمعة وما طلعت شمس ولا غربت على, على يوم أفضل من يوم الجمعة. So this is the best of the days. وفيه ساعة لا يوافقها عبد مسلم يسأل الله فيها خيرا إلا أعطاه إياه. During the Friday, there is an hour or there is a specific time that no Muslim servant catches while asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for some good except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to him. So your you're making dua and the word ameen should match the ameen of the angels who are uh, repeating and who are responding to your dua and Allah will give you this uh, uh, dua that you are asking for. Also, وَلَا يَسْتَعِيذُ مِنْهَا فِيهَا مِنْ شَرٍ إِلَّا أَعَادَ he does not seek refuge from any evil in this day, in this hour, in this specific time, except that Allah will protect him. And by the witness, وَمَشْهُود is the witness. So we said, وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُود So shahid is يَوْمُ الْجُمُعَةِ Mashhud is the day of Arafah. So this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَمَشْهُودْ يَوْمُ عَرَفَةً So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by As-Sama, وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُودْ وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودْ قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ Doomed and cursed were the people of the ditches. Those who ordered that the ditches are to be dug. Okay? We said earlier that Ashab al ukhdud are the people who uh, were thrown in the hellfire, in the ditches, and uh, 
those people were ordered to be thrown by Ashab al Ukhdud, the ones who ordered for the ditches to be dug. Al Nari Zati al Waqud of fire fed with fuel. And what is the fuel of fire? Waquduha al Nasu al Hijara. People and stones. So it, the fire is intensely blazing fuel. When they sat by it, so we said that the king, the high people, the close people of the king, they were, uh, uh, they gave the orders so that if people would not go back from their religion, they would throw them. And they were sitting witnessing what's happening and they were enjoying looking at the people being burned in that fire. وَهُمْ عَلَى مَا يَفْعَلُونَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ شُهُودَ And they witnessed what they were doing with the believers. So if you look, yes, that's right, the, their bodies were, the, the believers' bodies were tortured, but their souls were victorious. And by this, we understand that we all pass through uh, turbulences and tests so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us victorious at the end so they did not commit any sin except that that they believed in Allah the Almighty the worthy of all praise who is the owner of the kingdom of heavens and earth and whatever is in between the heaven and earth and whatever is in the heaven and earth and Allah is witnessing he is watching over everything nothing is concealed from him nothing is hidden from Allah Allah knows whatever each and every person does or says or or do whatever anything and he will uh, he will reward or punish according to the deeds one time uh, a person came and he asked his uh, he gave uh, 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 chickens uh, chicken to his each to each of his uh, three children and he said to them go to the uh, go wherever you want and kill that uh, chicken in a place that nobody sees you the next day uh, they came back two of them got rid of the chicken one of them got the chicken back and he the father said what happened why did you kill the chicken and they said yes baba we did and he looked at the uh, one with the chicken back he said what happened? He said, I couldn't find a place where Allah was not looking at me. This is what we need. A heart that is aware of Allah in all our time, in all our life. Every second of our life will be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what's the punishment of the people of the ditch? In the fatanul mu'minina wal mu'minat. So verily, those who burned the believing men and the believing women, and did not repent of it, did not regret what they had done, verily, they will have the torment of hellfire, and they will have the punishment of burning fire. And this is because the recompense is based upon the type of deed they form, performed. They burned, they will be burned. They burned the people, the believers, they will see what a blazing fire means. And as for those who believed and did righteous good, good deeds, for them, there will be gardens under which rivers follow. And we've seen the different amazing rewards that Allah has uh, created, has prepared for, 
for the people of uh, uh, heaven. He says, I have, I have prepared for my righteous slaves that which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and has never crossed the mind of any human being. This is the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the people who amanu wa amilu salihat, believed in Allah and did righteous deeds. ذلك الفوز الكبير and that is the supreme success. In the Quran you see sometimes we see الفوز المبين, الفوز الكبير, الفوز العظيم. So what's the difference between these types of victories, these types of uh, success? الفوز المبين is to be away from, to be saved from hellfire and to enter al الفوز الكبير is to have the highest, the highest places the highest ranks in al-jannah while al-fawz al azim is getting the gaze of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ru'yatu Allah ta'ala dhalika al-fawz al-kabir inna batsha rabbika la shadid the punishment of your lord is ever is severe and painful it's continuous so for those who opposed his commands, for those who rejected his messengers, Allah is the owner of power. He is the most strong. He will give the, any, any type of punishment he wants. <inaudible> he is the one who begins the creation. He, he repeats it, he repeats it as just as he began it, without opposition, without resistance. وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ He is the all-forgiving, the all-loving. He forgives those who sin and repent. Do istighfar and promise not to get back to the sin. ذُو الْعَرْشِ الْمَجِيدِ He is the ruler of the kingdom of the universe. He is the owner of the mighty throne, the glorious. He is the exalted. فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدُ فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدُ Let, Let's just go back to the word. ذُو الْعَرْشِ الْمَجِيدُ If we say الْمَجِيدُ then we are uh, talking about Allah's attribute. But when we say ذُو الْعَرْشِ الْمَجِيدِ then we are describing the throne. فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدُ he is the doer of whatever he wills. There is no one who can counter his ruling. He is not asked about what, uh, what he does due to his greatness, power, wisdom, and justice. No one can ask, ask him anything. Has the story of the uh, uh, hosts reached you? Fir'auna wa Thamud. Fir'aun, we all know the story of uh, Fir'aun, the transgressor of uh, Egypt. Fir'aun who opposed Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drowned him. Wa Thamud, the people of uh, Sayyidina Salih, uh, who, uh, whose sign was to get the she camel out of the mountain and they had to, to not to slaughter it, but they didn't listen to, the, to their uh, prophet. So what happened? Did you know about their torment? About that one, uh, torment that was sent upon them. So this is an affirmation. Inna batsha rabbika lashadeed. The punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe and, and painful. When he seizes the wrongdoers, then he seizes them with, 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 with a severe and painful punishment. بَلِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فِي تَكْذِيب The disbelievers, the non-believers persist in denying. They are in doubts, uh, suspicion, disbelief, and they are rebellion. They won't, they won't uh, accept. They keep denying. وَاللَّهُ مِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ مُحِيطٍ But what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over them. He encircled them with his power. He knows all about them and what they do. They cannot escape from him. 
بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ. So what we are talking about, what we are learning about is Quran, is a glorious Quran, is magnificent, noble. It's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom he has revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through uh, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam. Fi lawhim mahfuz, al lawhil mahfuz is the tablet that's where uh, Al-Quran is being preserved, preserved from any, any increase in it, decrease, distortion, change. Uh, so the Quran is unchangeable. It's imperishable. It was revealed the same way as we have it now, and it will stay uh, the same way until it's the day after. So what's the story of, uh, what's, what's the wisdom behind the story of Ashab al -Ukhdud? We know that we have, first of all, to raise our kids the perfect way. That we have to instill in their heart and in their mind the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he is overwatching, that he is with us. When we want something, we just... Uh, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make sincere dua with close uh, understanding, with uh, 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 we know, we are certain that he is, he is listening to us and he is answering our calls. And always remember, you have to be the model for your children. You cannot ask your children to be uh, a certain way if you are doing something against that. Again, Something else we benefited from this story that there is always tests in this life. We have to practice patience. We have to practice acceptance and rida from uh, to, uh, to whatever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is putting us in, because Allah says, "Am hasibtum al jannah." Is it so easy for you to go to uh, to enter paradise without being tested? So Allah would, would, would uh, know, uh, he would differentiate, he would put into groups the good and the evil. So inshallah, next time we'll be doing Surah Al-Tariq, we will stop here inshallah. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم